Hello everyone, um, today I'm going to give you a really interesting chess game that kind of involves a few traps and I think that um, this setup is very deadly and uh, hopefully someone will learn from this. Now this game I definitely could have done a whole lot better than I did but um, I basically got what I wanted but I just could have done it a lot smoothly. Anyway, so he starts out with e4. Now, whenever someone starts with the e4, as black, there's so many options, and even though e4 is a good move, I think that this move right here is probably one of the best. Um, I'm not sure what variation this is called or how this is. I know that Bobby Fischer uh, played a game similar to this, and I kind of liked what he did, and I liked how the idea basically behind this is instead of gaining control of the center with your pawns, you do it with your minor pieces first and then do, uh, you know, get your pawns in the game later. So that's my mindset behind this. He decides to do this, a uh, very standard development move, so I bring my bishop here, same shadow. He decides to defend the pawn with his bishop, giving him time to castle. I decide to push my pawn and have a, here's a few things, the purpose behind this move. Not only am I eyeing down this d5 square, but what I'd eventually like to have my pawn move up, and uh, you know I want a defender on that, it also clears room for my bishop to come into the game and kind of eye down the white king's weakness. He develops his knight, putting even more pressure on this square. He probably saw this. I decided to bring my bishop to uh, c5, and the reason why is not only am I eyeing down this the weakness that I said before, I kind of want him to castle. If I can get him to castle, I'm going to set up a really devastating trap. So, he, of course, you know, if he doesn't castle, it's going to be even worse for him. So he decides to do so, and immediately I bring my knight up to f6. And the reason why is I want to eventually bring it to g4, since his queen can no, cannot attack because of this uh, knight, I can set it right here in a nice spot. And if he decides to attack this with his pawns, it's pretty much going to be game over. So he decides to push up his pawn, which is fine. You know, to me, if you're going to push your pawns up, you got to have a have kind of strategy involved. If you're just pushing your pawn up to attack a knight, you got to look at where the knight's going to go, and you got to see if there's any spots that really wouldn't want it to go. And if you look carefully, this spot is not a good spot for him because this is really eyeing down the new king's weakness, which is now um, a2. Or no, I'm sorry, h2. Whenever a king castles the, on the king's side, this is like the worst square, and you really want to defend this. And he really doesn't want to move his knight either because if he moves his knight, he's not going to... I couldn't... If he leaves his knight here, my queen could stay here. But as you see, it's not going to matter. He moves his knight to attack my bishop. Now, I, I could try and protect it. But in my eyes, I don't really need to. I, I could, you know, of course, push my pawn to d6. But it's not really necessary. So I decided to just push up a board and get center control. If he takes my bishop, I mean, the reason why I don't mind if he takes my bishop is because, you know, it's not really going to go anywhere, you know. If I were to move my bishop right now, there's really no square that I could bring it to that wouldn't be a really passive move. You know, I could bring it here, he could attack with his pawn, but then what? You know, I don't want to just have him be able to develop, so that's fine. You know, I'd rather gain center control and sacrifice my piece, but in, in turn gain his piece. So, this is what I do. I think it was the best decision. I Maybe not. And if he decided to do the, um, I don't know if anyone's familiar, but you can actually move your pawn right here and take this pawn, which is kind of cool once you see it done. But either way, it wouldn't have been smart for him because I would have taken back. But he decides to take the bishop. And now I take, and this is what I was talking about, now I have really good pawn structure, in my opinion. I really got good control of the center. You know, now he has one pawn, a knight, and a bishop that really isn't doing anything. So, in my eyes, this is better. He moves his knight, obviously um, clearing this, but I don't want to lose this knight just yet, so I bring up my pawn. 
he moves up his bishop, which was kind of not a great idea on his part, because all I simply have to do to block this is move my pawn up. Now he's either going to lose a bishop or he's going to lose a knight. And, you know, he may take a pawn, but, you know, if you take a pawn, it's not going to really be worth it. Um, he moves his uh, pawn here, which is fine. Um, I would prefer him if he moved this pawn up. This will clear the root of uh, the... Um, this file, the age file for my rook, which is what the fishing pole trap is. But even if he does this, it's fine. You know, I can still have this uh, file uh, up for me. Anyway, so I don't really mind if I lose this knight. So I just to take, decide to take his bishop, getting more control of the center. Once he takes here, um, I can tell that his next move would probably be right here. That way he could fork my king and my bishop, and not only that, he has a protector of this pawn right here. Which I have to admit is actually really good. Now I could, of course, take with my knight, with my pawn, and then he wouldn't be able to move up. But then, to me, that's just not a good idea. I won't. I don't mind if he forks this, because I really want to get him in checkmate. You know, I don't want to waste all these moves worrying about this. I don't know. I was thinking and considering it, but you'll see. I think I made the right choice, and in hindsight, I probably should have, but I don't know. To me, it wasn't such a great idea. So I decided to just push up my pawn, kind of just letting him do his thing. Now once he moves, I move my king. And now that his knight's here, it's kind of out of the game. You know, of course, he could attack my pawn here, but that's fine. Right now, I'm just going to focus on getting him in checkmate. Now he kind of has to do something or he's really going to be in some real hurt. If he doesn't move his pawn right here, it's pretty much going to be game over. If he does move his pawn here, now I can finally take with my knight. And then I can eventually move up the board. So he decides to take with the knight, which is fine. Because now the, the, my, uh, the h file is clear with my rook. Now, I know it looks like, wow, you know, you're getting kind of pushed around, but all his pieces can't do anything. His queen's not in the game. His rook is in the game. If you were to exclude all these pieces over here, all he has is a king and a rook. That's all he has, really. So, that's fine. And have even though my pawn structure is kind of funky, it does. I do have some control over that. He decides to take my pawn, which is not a good idea, because now I'm just going to come up, put him in check. He only has one move. He moves. And and to go back a little bit, if he would have took if he would have put this pawn up to take my knight, then that pawn would have still been there, and that's why it's such a deadly trap, because if this pawn was here, I could have just moved up. It would have been checkmate. Anyway, so he moves. Now, you know, he has no other choice but to move away. Now when I move here, he really can't do anything. Now he his best move, I guess, was to trade off bishop uh was to trade off queens because not only is he eyeing down this right here, he's also threatening checkmate. So I really kind of have to take this queen, but that's fine. Once I take his queen and he takes back, all I have to do is put him in check. Now he could move his king, but to me that's not really a great move. Because then I could just move up my pawn, and then I'm eventually going to get a queen, and he's not he's not going to have anything. So he decides to move up. He decides, you know, his best move, I guess, is to take the rook. Because even though I'm going to get a queen, I might as well take something with you. You don't want to have two rooks versus a queen and a rook. You might as well just have, you know, one rook and uh, some of these other pieces. Um, so I, first he decides to take right here and put me in check, which is kind of like a wasted move. I mean, it does take a pawn away, but as soon as I kill your rook, I'm going to take back that knight. So in my opinion, he should have actually moved his knight to a bet, you know, and keep him in the game because he could have definitely used it later. So I just move. He decides to take. I take. He only has, well, I guess he has a few moves, but he doesn't really want to get chased around the board. So he moves. I take the knight. He moves here, threatening my pawn. I defend it. He puts another defender. I put another defender, our attacker. Now he moves up his pawn to me. Not really a great move. Doesn't really do anything. Now I can just check you. And now you just kind of have to move. You really can't do anything. Now I move up again. See, that's why whenever... You might as well just take. 
in my opinion, or just leave it as it is. There's no reason to push up the board when there's nothing, no reason to. This doesn't do anything. If anything, now I could just take with my knight. <sighs> so he moves down, and now I just come over here. Now, there, I should have probably kept my rook here in the begin with, but I didn't know what he was going to do, so he decides to put more attackers on here. But now I'm just going to bring him up here. Now, this spot right here with a pawn is completely defended you know there's nothing attacking and there's no way he can attack it so I can just bring my queen here and there's really nothing he can do and he kind of wants to get rid of you know he probably wants to move and, and and actually you know I probably should have kept my rook here now that I think about it but like I said I wasn't as smooth as I wanted to be but I kind of didn't know what he's going to do so he moves his bishop which wasn't a good idea because now I'm going to put you in check and now I'm definitely going to take the bishop I couldn't take the bishop before because of the rook, obviously. He moves, I come, and now I'm just going to chase him around into check. And and this is the good thing, um, I think, you know, if you ever watched uh, Bobby Fischer's famous game, he has a, a very good tactic of always keeping his pieces together and never worrying about, you know, it, to, if you look... Hit all the pieces that I have right now are kind of working together. And not only that, these pieces... Okay, let me just explain, because I have a hard time kind of explaining things unless I show them. So now that I do this, he can't take with his pawn because my queen is eyeing down here. So And not only that, my rook is defending my knight, my knight is defending my queen, and everything is kind of going smoothly together. He really doesn't have anything he can do. You know, he can, you know, he moves and takes the pawn, but the pawn wasn't doing anything. If my eyes, you should be worried about defending your king instead of taking a pawn, because now I'm just going to put you in checkmate. But anyway, uh, my name is David. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, yeah. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.